Welcome back to the acting analysis at Tips for Animators. And today is going to be about a different clip than usual movies or TV shows. This is a what is called a Robin screen test here, as you can see. I was tagged on Twitter. I was sent this. I checked it out and it's really cool. And it's also right off the bat, really interesting. So I'm going to scrub forward. This is where the footage starts. But a link in the description you can watch and you should watch the original. It's really neat how it starts with the Robin Williams impression, just the audio. You can't see anything. Robin? What? But you can hear a concerned voice that says, Robin. <laughs> That's my Robin. I gotta try another thing here. More calling. And then more impressions where the energy is up. And then every now and then you can hear a Robin. And I'm saying this because from a visual point of view, also, this is really cool. I love that we know right away where we are. So you got some makeup, you got a clipper here. Must be dressing room. It's something movie, TV related. There's a script there. And then you can see, ah, okay. And we still see this. So you hear the energy of Robin Williams, but then you have this character that kind of paces around. It's very interesting as a, as a setup. And this is what I like in terms of animation. You can hear this. And again, you should watch the original. Duh, working on my report on dreams. <laughs> he's laughing here. So he's work, working on report on, on dreams. Working on my report on dreams. <laughs> but while this happens, you can see this here. And I like this as a setup for your animation. Because imagine you have your, your audio, it's your lip sync. And it could be, I mean, it's pretend it's exactly this, right? It's a happy piece where it sounds like this is going to be great. It's going to be funny. And you might imagine that this character is laughing and it's being happy. And then it turns around and you can see the worried face, the clasping of the hands, and it just changes the tone of the shot already. And then you can do your own lip sync or it cuts to the other character. It's just, it's an interesting setup where it's the off-screen audio is like an anticipation to, oh, this is going to be fun. And then this is going to change the direction of it. As a general thing for your clip, I think it would be really cool. This animation is always really fun when you have an actor in front of a mirror, just trying different things. And I think when they're rehearsing, it gives you an opportunity to overact into really big moments. I think that's really cool. Beautiful aspect of human culture. In fact, but then right off the bat, like, I'm not an, a Robin Williams expert, but I'm a big fan of his. But you watch this and you go, okay, first of all, he looks like him. Happens when you're at night and you close but then you got these expressions, the tone of the voice. It's just everything is really, really good. It's really crazy. Again, watch the whole thing. What I like about this in terms of editing, that could be something for your shot too, is where you have a lot of energy in terms of expressions and a lot of body movement, right? There's a lot of visual energy. It's, it's, it's a lot of stuff really there. Bizarre. Cutting to this, where it's just a lot more quiet and she's just desperately trying to get his attention. And I love that little, just that slight little lift there. It's very subtle. Got the, the eyebrows, the mouth, the slight little step back. And in terms of animation, it's kind of neat to have, imagine if this is your, your sequence where if you had always energy, let's like pretend in your timeline, a lot of energy all the time. As a viewer, you might get tired after a couple seconds. Like it's always kind of the same thing. The energy is always at a 10. But with this setup, I like that it's it's getting, you know, it's kind of small and big the way he does it. But then it gets to something very quiet for contrast. So you might get already enough here, but then you draw him back into like, oh, what's going on? Okay, that's interesting contrast. And then back to a bigger moment. And for animation, you can have a character sit and then suddenly stand. You can show off different mechanics and still go back to almost like an escalation of the worry. And that contrast can really draw you in. I think that's a really cool setup. This is a five minute thing, I'm gonna go through the whole thing. But again, you can see this here where she's just standing, looking worried, stepping back. And he continues more energy, but different types, right? More facial stuff this time. Her more worried, she's closer. You can even frame her correct. Like she's just, it's, it's the, the camera tries to catch up with her getting closer and it goes bigger and bigger until this. And then you get the explosion Robin! where she yells Robin. And then you can see that change into what's going on, including the uh, makeup hair artist there. I love this too here that she finally has the attention, but she needs to speak to him privately. And this is anticipation before she says it. She looks up first, the worried look. And it's again, like it's the stepping back, like the distance, like she needs, I don't know, I'm, I'm totally, you know, guessing here, but to me, it feels like she needs room. You know, it's almost like she's stepping back in anticipation for her to leave. But I like this. I could be totally wrong. I don't know, you know, actors do things instinctually, but for me, analyzing this, I like this idea of stepping back because in her mind, she wants her to get out. So she's already giving her room. And I love this too with the facial, the head accents here before the audio. 
think I talked about this actually in my last uh, acting analysis tips. Did you get this moment? It's so great. She follows her a little bit. She's almost like, I'm sorry that expression. I'm sorry that I have to do this to you. You gotta get out. And she goes out. And again, like that's cool too in terms of when you have three characters and something uncomfortable is happening, the, she is trying to get his attention. So what is he going to do when the moment is coming of, okay, she's got my attention. Something's going to happen. I'm not sure what's going on. Where is he going to look? Is it going to be immediately addressing her? Is it going to be slightly, well, I'm going to wait until I address her. I'm going to look at her leaving. Kind of interesting too. And then not immediately getting into this. This is also something that's not used too often in animation. Again, I'm trying to just keep this animation related, but you could have lip sync while the character's in this pose and it's more body language, stuff with the hands, but you don't quite see the face yet. And you can use this for, I don't know, like two thirds of the shot. And then at the very end, let's see when she does it, you can have the moment where she finally looks up, like here. I'm happening in. And then that's your contrast. But even then, in this case, also, she's not immediately saying this. Obviously, it's so painful for her to say it. And she's got that, that sigh before we go. But again, not an expert in Robin Williams, but I feel like, yeah, I feel like these are, he does those things here. He does that a lot. I feel like it could be totally wrong. But the moment you look at this, the silhouette, everything else, like, hmm, that really feels like Robin Williams. It's so well done. I also like that he has, he has a lot of energy put all this right and he realizes that she's really upset and in order to not make this worse with more energy he realizes hmm I need a little soft touch here when he picks up the chair you can feel this right he picks it up and he takes tiny little steps to put it down it's not a lift and slam down of the chair I love this too I'm a big fan every time I, I talk about like off-screen gestures or actions I always reference uh, Spider-Verse, just because it's just, it does a lot in that movie and it's really cool. And this is really neat too. This goes back into using props for acting and like character reveal. I like that lifting the chair a little bit and dropping it down lightly tells us that, okay, he has now a softer touch. He wants to see what's going on and he's worried about her because he doesn't know yet that it's more about him. I mean, his friend died, spoiler, but it's more about, she's more concerned about his reaction to all of this. But it's really neat, even just how he sits and he has the slower relaxation in the shoulders, just to keep it quiet and soft. It's a lot of cool stuff here. Let's just go up before we this too, like all these little things here. This reminds me of Robin Williams. I love this, just from a look of it, just the way it's shot with the lighting and the lights here. It just the whole thing is really it's so my thing. Both actors are really, really great. I love this. I love how he at this point he realizes something's really not right because she's still not saying anything and i like this here if you look at that that small little small little change it's tricky in animation if you have this on your demo reel to do something this subtle but i think at the in the middle of a shot or your second shot on your reel you could do something where it's that kind of setup what? i love this that light tiny little what? tiny little head accent over there what? for his what and even then, you can see how even his eyes are relaxing just a little bit from the smile to just a bit less. It's super subtle. It's just so cool. And then she finally says John it. Belushi. And even this here, it's a subtle thing of, I'm reading way too much into this. But in terms of animation, <laughs> I like the idea of there's going to be something with a lot of weights that I'm about to say. And she's dropping the head to go, John Belushi died last night and it's kind of this and let's go and let's say it again i don't know if that's intention but i like this idea and i'm totally going to steal this idea of dropping first in anticipation of the heavy subject john belushi died last night and then doing that and you can see this here too from a technical point of view because i bring this up to students a lot it's little head accents so when you have your line maybe not yellow in front of this not the best idea but if you have your line john belushi died last night Sometimes it's interesting to match the up and down in your rotations of your head, right? If your head goes up and down, match that exactly. And then you start deleting things, right? It's not, you don't want it to be like super mimicking that. But sometimes it's interesting to keep remnants of it. So I'm actually going to keep the sound in here. I'm going to bring up the sound. John Belushi died last night. And you can see how she has those little accents 
that match, obviously she's saying it, that match the sound. But something to think about when you do animation, it's just some of the pitfalls is that you do your head move. So let's say she goes from here and to here. And that's all you have in the head. It's just a rotation plus the body mechanics of the chest moving over. While she's saying something here. And then it feels like that is a move and the mouth is just a copy paste on it. So that's why I'm always a big fan of just adding every now and then if the jaw goes down, that's also going to bring the head down as well. You can see little, little accents in the head as well there. And this is just interesting when you have as a viewer, like how is he going to react? You know, she's going to say something bad. And then you hear this and then you wonder, how is he going to react? And it's very subtle again. I love that it's not an immediate explosion. It's just small changes. Animation-wise, it would be so tiny in terms of your head rotations, the hold, get a slight dip in the shoulders and a slight drop in the eyebrows. It's so tiny. They found him in his bungalow this morning. She could use here and explains more stuff to him and this is almost, it's almost, I almost feel bad talking over this emotional moment there. But go watch it. There's a lot of stuff where he's not, again, he doesn't have a big outburst. He doesn't quite believe it. The eye contact goes away, but then he peeks back up just to check. Are you kidding or not? He also does a lot of uh, raising of the head. Again, this is me reading into this, but I like this animation wise uh, as anticipation of, you can see this. He just raises the head, raises until he no. goes down. Something interesting to think about in terms of like feeling wise, happy, sad. Would you, you know, if you stylize this, puppy ears will go up, the head goes up, would shoulder go up? Something to think about how you raise parts of the body or the head or whatever it is. No. When he does this, this again reminded me so much of Robin Williams. This must be something, I don't know, something the way he does it here, that all that to me just screams Robin Williams. But I love the little changes. It's always a different type of thing because it's it's starting to bubble up and it's just really upset about it. Not John. All that stuff. Again, I don't want to just house feel bad. I'm gonna scrub forward. Just watch this. It's a it's a really, really well done moment. And again, it's like he's peeking at her. He doesn't address her completely. I I would use this as in I don't want to face the truth, so I'm slightly turned away from you, but I need to look at you to confirm. That would be my my <laughs> highfalutin impression and, and interpretation of this. But I like the idea of that. But anyway, continues on and she's very worried about him. You got the puppy tilt. She leans forward towards him. I mentioned this in my account tips a lot. So sorry if this is a broken record, but if you have two characters, if they talk, depending on the subject matter, is she going to lean away from the character or get towards the character? She cares about I him. I can't let what happen. So she's going to lean towards him and, and, and close in that gap what there. Stuff like that, you got to think about when you have multiple characters, just animation-wise and compositionally. Also, like a lot of the, just again, the filming, the over the shoulder. I can't. And I like that too, that she she has now a bit of a problem. Of, like she can't handle that he will be in a bad place. And you can see how he wants to reassure her and he's really turning more towards her and keeping eye contact. Mm, but a telling swallow there. There's a lot of subtle stuff in there. It's so good. Again, let me just scrub forward. There's some stuff towards the end. It's that she makes a joke, and I like that. It kind of breaks the tension. They both have kind of the, the room to look down and be a bit more loose and like, all right. And this is cool too. This goes back to animation stuff. So if you if you listen to this, I'm gonna bring up the sound for myself and I'll I'll cut in the actual full audio here. So they have their moment where it's quiet, they can reconnect. And you hear a muffled sound of, okay, whatever it is. I actually didn't understand it, but you know, it's probably time for them to go. And that's an interesting setup in terms of animation where, and it's tricky because you don't, people don't always have the sound on when they listen, or when they watch your animation, but it's a cool thing of an external, like a, a grab of attention where you might have your pantomime or your lip sync, and then something happens that breaks that moment. And then it changes that, right? It could be something dramatic, a call to action something like come over here help me but i think it's a cool opportunity to break your acting as in like breaking the mood or breaking the intensity whatever you want to do i like that as a as it's almost like a lip sync tweak right you have two characters talking so one and two but you tweak the audio to muffle this sound and this character is either talking through the door to the other one or looking at someone else but it's it's kind of this setup where you tweak the audio so that it comes off screen so they both have to react. Kind of like this. This is a cool 
contrast of standing up. Also, I'm a big fan of props, right? If you watch, if you watch my, my, my shots or my clips, you know I talk a lot about sets and props. But here's, here's another one, right? So he has a chair with armrests, and she doesn't. So he gets up by pushing with this, leans forward a bit more, and she does it using her knees that are slightly off screen. Slightly, they're completely off screen here. And then he's, you know, maybe the nervousness, sweaty, sweaty hands there. That it's just interesting. I like just as as a contrast. But it's just a usage of prop. I'm always a big fan of that. You know, you don't have to go out there. She needs, he needs a little bit of a moment. And this is cool too, where it's almost like he is, I don't know, like however you want to use this, but it's you have the frame of the shot, but then you also have him within the door frame. So a frame within a frame type of thing, framed by, you know. Maybe the responsibility of of the character, or just like a nice homage. I just like that framing a lot. And in terms of animation, it's also a nice silhouette because when you get to moments like these, it's a nice profile silhouette. You got color contrast with the red and the white, and with the light here, you have a nice little outline here. But it's it's, it's a nice setup. I like this how it's just like his the future roles, you know, like the destiny or the the success that he has. It's really cool stuff in there. And then it goes back into, he needs some time. He needs to prepare. And this is cool too, where he goes from to this here, right? Where he has more of a, a happy line. Like it's something for you in animation could be, your audio is always very positive and happy, happy energy and everything. But either in the audio, the character stops talking or you find a way to kind of cut and stop. And then you can do this, right? So it's kind of like the audio is to pretend but that's kind of it's a visible subtext there of like, I'm not ready. I'm all calling Orson. <clears throat> Come in. And this here, yeah, it's kind of a, <clears throat> it's a bit more serious, but it's an interesting setup where you would only hear, if you only hear the audio, it would be positive. But then if you watch it, you can see the struggle Come in, in the character. I think that would be a really cool setup for a lip sync piece as well. And then he goes up here. There's another thing I want to show you is this here. Again, props where you might have a character pretend to be happy but then the character holds on and, and like holds these very tightly squeezes them so the face lies but the body tells the truth and through props you can see the squeeze so the subtext the subtext is visible through the squeezing of this he doesn't do this but he does this all right but it can, it's like an extension of that like all right shaking hands or arms out i'm ready i'm ready with this let's relax let's stretch a bit Again, props. I always like them. Costume props or whatever props you have. And then he forgets this here. More impressions here are really, really fun. And then that's kind of that. So anyway, my very, very subjective impressions of what's going on here. But as a clip, there's so much awesome stuff in terms of subtle acting. Those moments here are really, really great. So go and watch the whole thing without my rambling. And that is that for a different thing on Thursdays. And uh, hopefully I'll see you in some other clip. All right, thanks.